Are you ready for today's topic? When to quit and when to keep going. Hashtag quit, hashtag keep going. Which camp are you in? Do you quit a lot of things? Do you give up on a lot of things? Do you start something and quit halfway through? Do you find that you get all excited and motivated to, some, to start something and then all of a sudden it all goes downhill? Hashtag quit, hashtag keep going. Are you someone who always finishes what you start. You set out, you start something, you finish it, no matter what it costs you. I want to know. Let's see those hashtags down below. Tell me, tell me. Hello, Christine. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, Genevieve. Yay. Look at everybody in the morning. Okay. On to business. Let's get talking about today's topic. So the first thing I want to make perfectly clear is uh, I've been a quitter my whole life. <gasps> what? It's true. It's true. Uh, it's the question of knowing when to quit. That is the main thing. So when I was a teenager, uh, I was never good in school. So let's be clear about that. I only learned in my 30s that I learned through listening. And I, when audiobooks were born, it was like the world opened up and like this big sh light shined down on me. Like, Whoa! Because I started to become a sponge and I learned so much in my 30s because before then, everything had to be read, you know, through a book, and I don't learn very well that way. So in school, I was never really that great. But when I started working at the ripe age of 14, I head on out and I started working in all sorts of different jobs. And the reason why there were so many is because about six months into the job, I would quit. And that's because I would get to a job and I would soak up as much as I could um, and when I felt like I wasn't learning anymore, or there was no further experience that could be gained, I would quit the job and move on to something else. Now, I didn't know back then that I had, you know, this entrepreneurial blood running through me. Uh, but certainly, pretty much everyone in my family uh, has run or is running their own business. And it's definitely something that is in the Thacker DNA. So what I found interesting during that time was that I was getting a really awesome education as to how businesses work, what kind of different elements are there when it comes to different sectors. So uh, I worked in a donut shops, I worked in a movie theater, uh, I worked in a real estate office, I did fast food and I became a manager of like a pizza hut, but I was also a manager of like a little, little Caesars. I did formal sit down restaurants with the, the whole tie and everything, right? Uh, fast paced diner while you're doing everything. You're at the cash, you're cooking, you're serving, you're cleaning up in the back. I did a landscaping job. Um, I worked at Kmart folding sweaters. And I won't bore you with all the details of what each and every one of those positions taught me. But the minute I found myself kind of now going into work and just kind of like, being redundant and kind of doing the same thing. I wasn't learning anything new. I not only changed jobs, but I changed a completely different type of job so I could learn as much as I could about business. Now, in that time, when I, uh, I was living in Ottawa for a short time, came back to Montreal, and my dad helped me get started in opening um, a pet store. And I ran a pet store and uh, luckily I had all that experience of how to do inventory and cash and how to balance checkbooks and how to serve customers with, with customer service through Kmart and all this. I've had all this great experience from working for other companies and people uh, that when I came time to run my own business, I had a good understanding as to how to run this little retail shop. But the thing about the pet store at that time was at one point, I can't remember how far in, at least maybe a year, two years into running the store, I felt like that was it. You know, I was going in, I had set up a pet adoption, uh, I had the retail aspect of it, I started learning how to train dogs, I owned a house at the time, so I started filling up my house with dog boarding and all sorts of fun stuff like that, and I made the bulk of the money through dog grooming. Can you believe it? I was actually a dog groomer. Hashtag shocked. <laughs> you never thought I would be a dog groomer before, but I have. I've done many, many, many things. So um, I remember the day quite in particular, and 
you know, I'm, I'm, I'm grooming this dog and there was just hair going all up my nose. And I went to wipe my nose like this and there was just like old dog goober and everything all over my shirt. And I was like, just like, oh, it's too much dog hair. And all of a sudden I realized that this, in this business, um, Super Pet and PetSmart and all these big, big retail chains were just starting to come out. Um, so competing against dog food prices against these big dog food chains was tough. So I knew that, um, you know, for me to be successful in this business, it was about dog grooming and offering that service. And it was offering time for money. And there was so many, so many hours in the day and so many people, me, and even at the idea of finding other people to do the dog grooming. Uh, and I was considering, you know, um, getting a bigger location, hiring people, getting all these dogs coming in and so on and so forth. Hi, Linda. Yay. Um, I just found like it was not for me, like the running the store, I had learned a lot from it and I appreciated that learning. Um, but my, pa this was not my passion, like, you know, grooming dogs was not my passion at the time. And I just figured this is not for me. So that's when I decided to sell the store and go on to something else. But of course, in that process, I learned so much about myself. I learned about how to run a store. I learned, you know, all about the dog grooming business. I really started to get a really good scope for time for money. And way back then in 1996 or seven, I think it was all the way back then. Um, at that point, I learned that uh, $40,000 a year as a dog groomer was not in my wheelhouse. That's not where I wanted to do or wanted to be. So later I started this woman's entrepreneurial network. It was called WINS, the Woman's Entrepreneurial Networking System. And as a coach, I've always been someone who loves to coach and loves to teach and help people do stuff and accomplish things. So I started to help women getting started in business. And I did that for six years. And this was definitely a passion project. I would work until five. I would start at five o'clock in the morning. I would go till 10 o'clock at night. I was working nights, weekends, holidays, Christmas, summers. I was never leaving my office except to go and work out. And it was just like I was creating and creating and creating and doing so much stuff. I even had a radio show on Montreal's 940 News and uh, CJD. If you remember those stations, I'm sure they're still around. And um, it was called The Small Business Show with Sherry Thacker. I was running trade shows and doing all sorts of events. And I was kill, kick, 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 killing myself trying to run this business until one day, pew, 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 gave myself a slap around and said, okay, what's happening? Because I'm working for like $2 an hour, <laughs> right? Because I'm putting 100 hour work weeks into making this business go and it's not flying six years later. And I finally realized that, you know, I could build and I can create and I can help and I can be there for people and I could do all this stuff. But I was trying to sell a service to at that time was typically my customer was typically a woman who was divorced who was just starting to run some form of business for herself, usually an MLM company. And um, at the time, way back then, I, as you guys know, I, I wanted to start an online business. And I really was at a crossroads as to do I build this thing online or do I build this, you know, in with local chapters around Montreal? And sadly, I chose the chapter route and felt like I needed to create a bit of a presence in Montreal with people who are local in order to really um, get some leverage online. And uh, to this day, that was the wrong decision. Had I gone all in online back then, a go-to webinar was just coming out on the market. It was a brand new thing. Um, I think my life might have been very different today if I'd gone all in on the internet side, which was, by the way, my passion. That's exactly what I wanted to do. But Kesarasra, we learn from our mistakes. Um, then when I went into the car business with my dad, I was there for about uh, six years, some things overlapping, winds overlapped a little bit and all that sort of stuff. Um, there, I learned a tremendous amount about running a, a credit business, 
renting cars, selling cars, buying cars at auctions, repossessing cars at two o'clock in the morning, dealing with second and third chance credit type of people, uh, going to small claims court, putting um, documents together to try and win in small claims court, going and representing uh, myself. And so I learned a, a huge education in working with my dad in that car business, as well as I, de I developed uh, with some computer guys, a full online software that helped to uh, rent cars. It was the first online car renting software that was ever <laughs> ever built. Um, and, you know, two family members, right, working together. It was crazy. It was really stressful. We fought all the time, unfortunately, and I had to leave that because just the stress was just too much. The pressure, the fighting, it was all too, too much. And my, finally, my last example of this, and I'm sharing so many examples with you because there's always significant reasons why you want to persevere something and why you think you should quit something. And we're going to go through a bunch of those questions coming up. So I'll share my last story with you. Um, in 2008, um, I was single and I had, it was on, you know, these dating apps, or whatever they were. I met this guy from Alberta. He owned an oil company. He was a very rich guy. And we started to build this business together. It was called Bid Low to Buy. And it was one of the very first reverse auction websites um, ever to come to North America. This was an idea that we, well, he found that idea in um, Australia and in um, England at the time. And he was doing a lot of traveling there because his oil company was there, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, he says, you want to start this business with me? I said, sure. And we started um, soon after that you know, he was not the right romantic partner for me. So I said, listen, I don't know what you want to do. Uh, do you want to just take the business and go? Or do you want to keep working together? He said, no, no, let's keep working together. That's fine. So about six months in, we launched the website and it was really exciting. Things were amazing. It was flowing, it was going really, really well. But the person himself was not all there. And I knew that going in when I was dating him, I knew there was so many red flags that this person was not reliable, was manic. He was bipolar. He had a lot of up and down swings, but I wanted something so bad. I wanted that business. I wanted to start it. I wanted to build it. I wanted to believe that him and I could run this business um, together anyways. And I really ignored all of those red signs or red flags, um, you know, that getting into business with this person was not a good idea. Anyways, I'll, I'll save you all the, the long details, but I ended up putting myself significantly in debt while trying to fund this business as he was kind of popping in and out um, of, you know, being involved in the business and so on and so forth. And of course, I was heartbroken. So, you know, with all that to say, shortly after Bid Low to Buy is when I just started, I fell into the health space by accident. i had already had my own personal transformation by that time. I was already really fit. I was 130 pounds, ripped, um, and I had got all my certifications already because I had studied for myself. I went and got certified and got all the education strictly because I believe in education and I believe that you have to know <laughs> what you're doing if you want to accomplish anything. So um, I just, you know, I was so depressed over losing this business. I said, I'll take on a few personal training clients while I'm figuring out my next big opportunity. And that was 15 years ago. So I obviously fell into my passion. I was living, eating, breathing, drinking, sleeping, everything, fitness, health, personal training, group instructing, learning nutrition, all of that fun stuff. And as we came uh, through the times and I had my son and life evolved and blah, blah, blah. Um, I had my studio here in the house until the magic day where I decided I want to go 100% online. Okay, so that brings me to where we are today because I went into those big long tangents to show you that first of all, when you go out and you start something, 
it's not necessarily a bad thing if you decide to quit, especially if you've done a significant amount of evaluation to know if you should really be there or not. And the experience and what you gain in skill and what you push yourself to learn and how you better yourself and you strive to be great at something teaches you a phenomenal amount of things. And when I went online back in 2016 to learn how to do this online business thingy, I did all sorts of stuff. I did seven day challenges. I did a 90 day challenge. Um, it was, it was, wasn't until uh, late 2017 that I ran the first six week transformation challenge, which didn't even have anything to do much with gut health or any of those things. All of that stuff evolved over time by trying something, learning from it, developing a few skills, and then fine tuning it onto the next, onto the next. And now we're on to challenge 19.0. And even with that, we learned a lot. Um, maybe a year and a half into running the challenges, Jennifer Perron came up to me and she says, you know, sure that, you know, the people who are in 1.0 and 2.0, they're really struggling with how to keep all of these changes in their life. They did the six week challenge. They love it. But now all of their old habits are starting to fall back into place. And this is a problem. And at first, I'm going to be honest, I didn't take it seriously enough. I just felt like, oh, well, you know, that's what happens to some people. I've already been in the business 10 plus years. I'd seen that people fall off very quickly until it just kept happening. And I said, okay, I really have to fix this problem. And I started to dive deeper and deeper into that education to study and learn why is it that women can be hyper, hyper focused into eating salads for six weeks and running on a treadmill or taking some classes, but then the minute they stop being hyper focused on that thing, all the old habits come back into play. So I'm not going to dive down that rabbit hole. You know, I talk about that enough already. We're going to talk about now, um, you know, starting that thing and then figuring out whether or not you should keep going or you should keep uh or if you should let it go if you should quit right hashtag hello if you're enjoying this podcast so far hashtag hello if you're out there and enjoying this podcast so far so i don't know if you've ever read the book the dip by seth godin it's definitely a, a book worth reading it's a little bit more directed towards business but the concept remains the same and that happens when you start something and you get really excited about it and then things start to get hard, right? So the first week you're figuring things out. The second week you're like, oh, okay, this is kind of cool. The third week things are starting to get hard and difficult. And then all of a sudden the dip hits and that's the slump. I don't feel like doing this anymore. Hashtag the dip. Have you ever experienced that? When you get really excited, you start something, you get motivated, you start getting into the hard work of doing it, and then all of a sudden you're like, the dip hits. And that's really the, the question um, that we're going to start looking at today. And some of the questions that I go through when I start evaluating whether or not I want to quit something or if I want to keep pushing through. And in the book, Seth talks about leaning into the dip, right? So how do you push your way through the other side when things get really exciting and they're like, yeah, let's do this. And then all of a sudden it's like, I don't feel like it. How do you myself in any situation when I'm starting to evaluate whether or not I should quit something. And the first question is, why am I doing this in the first place? Sometimes we start something with one idea. We start going through the process. It shifts our focus a little bit, this, that, and the other way. And all of a sudden, we're really sidetracked from the original reason why we started this thing to begin with. So if that's the number one question, am I still doing what I set out to do? Is my mission the same? Am I still implementing the same passion? Maybe it's, you know, pivoted, the new trendy word, right, along the way. But is the original miss mission still in place? Okay. And then is this serving me the way I originally intended it to serve me? Okay. That's a big question. Am I getting fulfillment from what I'm doing? Can I see myself on the other side 
even though it might be hard in the moment or complicated, or I might be tired or lacking motivation, is do I know that if I keep going and I get to the other side, is it going to fulfill the, that original intention? Okay. Now, is there anything I am doing that is preventing me from getting the very most out of the project? Hashtag self-sabotage. If you are someone who starts something, you know it's good for you, you know you should keep going, but somewhere along the way, you start self-sabotaging your results. Hashtag self-sabotage. If you're getting in your own way, and we're going to talk about a few of those questions coming up, if that's something that you can relate to. Is staying here uplifting me or suppressing me? Right. So in, in the case with uh, my dad, um, I was enjoying my job. I had a lot of responsibility. Um, I, I had a lot of freedom. I could kind of come and go from the business as I pleased, so long as the work was getting done. There was a lot of great positive things in working with my dad. But at the end of the day, there was also a tremendous a lot of stress. And our relationship was always uh, being sacrificed because we were arguing so much. And it was, you know, yes, there was a lot of benefits. Yes, going on was a question like, what would I do next? And that was scary. But I knew staying there was either going to do, you know, either going to ruin permanently my relationship with my dad or put me in the hospital because I was literally developing an ulcer as a result of working there. So that's something. But when you think about this question, is it uplifting me or is it suppressing me? It circles back around to, Am I self-sabotaging this on purpose? And that's, uh, you know, Pandora's box that you've really got to open up and fully explore why you often might suppress yourself, self-sabotage yourself in any given situation. Is it the opportunity that is no longer serving you? It's not uplifting you. You find it, uh, you know, demotivating. You hate the people. There's someone there that is just making your life miserable. Um, the pay is no good or the, the husband, you know, is abusive or whatever the case may be. So are you in that situation and it's really suppressing you and it's not you. It's really not you. It's them. Or is it you, right? Have you talked yourself out of it? Have you said, yeah, you know, this is a good idea, but it's too hard. It's not me. It's too hard. I can't follow through. I don't want to do this because it's hard. Let's say quitting smoking, right? How many times if you are a smoker or you're doing some form of addictive behavior, are you saying, well, this action is not serving me. It's uh, making me extremely unhealthy, um, but quitting is too hard. And I'm willing to accept myself as a smoker then we're going to get into those questions as well. Okay. Um, and then finally, if I stuck through this, if I just kept going, would I eventually get to the result that I really want? So in the example of this program, if you're one of our NXL clients, for example, let's say you're in your second month and you're starting to see some progress, but it's really hard. And now you're getting some challenges between some of your old behavior coming back, or let's say that dip where it was once a shiny object. And now all of a sudden you're, you're dipping into the hard work. And are you really putting your mind into learning more about you and your self-sabotaging behaviors? Or are you studying your habits, your triggers, the foods that you're chemically addicted to? Are you, have you taken the time to get completely um, off of the foods that you are chemically addictive to. This is the hard work time. This is why the new NXL program is very different from what we've been doing over the last few years, because we're hyper focused on the habits that have that keep putting you in this situation to begin with. For example, losing weight or gaining weight has never, never been enough of a reason to start or stop a dieting program, except for the 10%. The 10% of the people who get up, they work out, they eat salad, 
They don't want to lose weight. They've already made it a, a standard in their life. They refuse to gain weight. They refuse to let their body fall apart. That's the 10% of the population who will get up, exercise every day and eat healthily. But to the 90% of the population, if you are 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 50 pounds, 100 pounds overweight, Gaining weight has never been a big enough reason for you not to fix the problem. And the big enough reason has to be your why. At some point, you decided to come to us and say, my why is big enough, right? I have to change this for my kids. I have to change this so I don't go on medications. I have to do this. I'm in too much pain. I have to do this. I'm in so much misery mentally that I cannot live like this anymore, right? So let's just say that you said yes to the opportunity. You evaluated the relationship, the job, the friendship, your health program, whatever the case may be. You said, yes, this person, this job, this opportunity is the right one for me, but I still need motivation on how to keep going. Hashtag keep going. If you're with me on this hashtag, if you still need motivation or you question how to stay motivated in the middle of a program, hashtag keep going. If you're with me on that. Okay. So as I said to you before, if it's not important to you, you're not going to get very far. Just because you want it doesn't mean you're willing to fight to get it. It has to be a situation where there's no other option, right? Case in point for me, I cannot work for somebody else. Can not work for somebody else. I will sooner wash toilets and scrub bathroom floors. Not that that's a bad thing, but I will sooner clean houses. That's always been my backup plan, just so that you, that you know, I'm not belittling washing toilets by any means, but let's be clear. Washing toilets isn't fun, right? I think we can all agree, LOL, if you're with me on that, washing toilets, not fun, but I'm willing to do that before working for somebody else. Because for me, there is no other option. Going to work, going nine to five or whatever the case may be, uh, having to work around colleagues and co coworkers, having a boss to answer to, not being able to make my own decisions, not having my own freedom as to when I wanna work and when I don't wanna work, et cetera, et cetera. Not an option for me, okay? I will go and start a home cleaning business. Watch out, Linda, and spotless girls will come out and kick your ass. <laughs> I'm joking, Linda, okay? <laughs> uh, I will. I'll do something like that. There's And uh, just sidebar, totally off topic, but that's always been something that has helped me to face my fears. Whenever I get worried about something, and for the longest time when, when Liam was two and three years old and I was by myself, and paying all the bills and all this stuff. I used to have a lot of anxiety every night about being able to sell the next personal training package or whatever. Um, you know, when am I going to get the next sale? It was really scary time. Um, I had just left Liam's father. Liam was a baby. I was paying for everything here by myself, still am. And, you know, I was, uh, I don't know, probably making, I don't know, I forget, four or five, six thousand dollars a month, something like that. Uh, but it was a hustle. Right, it was a hustle, hustle, and I had to keep always looking for the next sale. So when I would go to bed at night, and I would always, you know, be worried about what if I don't, you know, sell somebody tomorrow? What if I don't find my next client? What if I can't pay the bills? What if, what if? And there was all of this fear that was rushing over me. Um, you know, I always told myself, Sherry, there's always something to sell. There's always something to sell right? And I used to see it like a bit of a video game. And a lot of people would criticize me for that. Because for me, I had to make it fun. I had to make it engaging. I had to give myself a challenge. So I would mentally see the act of running my business like a video game. And I would see my clients and their progress from my heart, right? To see their transformation, to see what was happening to them was fulfilling my heart and it was amazing. But there was the business side of running things that, that would scare me to death and I would need ways to find my way through that. So 
that's the end of that sidebar. Okay, hashtag if you're still with me, hashtag I'm with you, Cher, because I know this is getting on time here. I, I'm gonna keep going so I can get finished with you guys here today. Are you willing to try new things even if you know you're gonna fail, right? Are you willing to make the risk? You guys know by now that my theme song is Shakira's Try Everything. And I love that song and it empowers me because it is me. I try everything until I find the formulas that work. And as you can see, if you've been here in the challenge since 1.0, you've seen the types of stuff that have worked and they've stuck because they've been the same thing we've been doing since 1.0. But there is stuff that has fallen off because it didn't work right? And it wasn't working or it was way too much work for the reward. And, um, you know, when I decided to close my studio, for example, that, that was disappointing to a lot of clients because they're like, man, sure, I really miss the energy of being able to come to your studio and see the people and hug them and, you know, train with them. And the energy was very, very different. And absolutely, that's going to bum a lot of people out. That was a decision I selfishly made for myself because at one point, you know, this time Liam was five or something, I think it was around five, five or six. And I had to say, you know what? At least 50 women have been coming and going in and out of my house every single day since Liam was a baby. Between massage clients and fitness people, my door was just this turnstile of people coming and going in and out of the house. So I decided I wanted to give Liam back his home back. I wanted my home back. And the scalability of being able to grow a business online would far outweigh the parking problem that I had at my front store, uh, front yard for all of my 1.0, 2.0 gals who were here, you know, uh, that my bastard neighbor kept calling the, the cops on me every five minutes because there was too many people parking outside my front door and that used to scare the heck out of me right I said like what happens if the city shuts me down every night I would go to bed what happens if the city shuts me down and I don't have a way to make money so as you can see sometimes you got to make tough decisions and you've got to change certain things that you're doing but you're you have to weigh the pros and cons and at that time I knew that I might disappoint a couple of clients because I chose to close down my studio, but that there were millions of clients online that I could help and protect and the people that could adapt and change and pivot with me and a lot of them are still here. They are still enjoying everything that we've created online and to the people who it didn't fit for. I am sure today they have found something that does really work for them. Okay, so are you willing to take risks? Are you willing to make tough decisions? Are you willing to do what it takes? And if you're not willing to do what it takes, if you say no, then what are you willing to do? There has to be something that you're willing to do. So let's bring the weight example back in because let's say you're not prepared to go all in on your health. So let's say you're willing to go half in on your health. Well, at least half in is better than no in. And are you willing to accept half the results? And that, as I do another little sidebar, is big for a lot of people because that's why they go half in, hashtag half in, if you're going to be honest and acknowledge that you go half in, you get half the results and then you're questioning you all the time. There's something wrong with me. I have a hormone problem. I got to get my thyroid checked. This is not going to work for me, blah, 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 because you're going half in, right? Let's say you had 50 pounds to lose. You lose the first 10, 15 pounds, but then you stop and you stopped following through on the growth on the way that we evolve in the program. You, you went into fasting week, you dipped into inflammation week, and then boom, stopped learning, stopped growing, stopped evolving, stopped studying. Now you're saying, well, how come is it I can work out three times a week and I'm not seeing the results that I want? There's something wrong with me. And then the frustration sits in because now you're halfway in. 
right? Does this make sense? Are you guys connecting with me on this hashtag connection? If you are getting me on this, where you feel like, okay, I know what I'm willing to do. And, it, and, and let's say it's a spectrum from one to 10 and I'm willing to go to six, right? A little bit more than half, but you're expecting the results of a 10 and you're really frustrated between the six and the 10. You're going at efforts to six. You're expecting the efforts of 10, but there's a gap there. Now, deep inside, I think your voice knows you could be doing more. Deep inside, you know, you could be pushing yourself harder in the workouts. You could be working out longer. You could be varying your workouts. You could be studying your workouts. You could be taking the data off of your phone, right? Your smartphone, studying your heart rate, studying your steps, talking to your coach about it, pulling apart. we got one gal in here. I got to tell you, she is pulling apart this program in every nook and cranny. When I look at her conversations with her coach versus all the other uh, people in the program, her conversations triple in numbers because she's studying everything. She's evaluating everything. She's questioning. She's maybe a little too much, a little hypersensitive too much about being wrong and being right. But if we skip that part, she's doing the work. She's doing the mental work that it takes to get a lifestyle transformation because you're digging underneath the salad and the treadmill. Anyone can eat salads and work on a treadmill for six weeks to six months and lose a bit of weight. But as you guys know by now, we're talking about all those high level stuff, the foods you're addicted to, the emotional relationships that are connected to those foods, the triggers that set you off, right? Uh, I shared uh, this weekend with somebody I was speaking with. I just realized on a call Saturday morning when I was having a uh, call with somebody and we were talking, I was giving my alcohol example of how I'd made the decision to divorce alcohol from my life. Even though I wasn't a big, huge drinker, I was still drinking wine two to three times a week, right? The average two bottles a week kind of thing that most people do. But this past Friday night was the first Friday in, since Liam was born that I was not triggered to drink alcohol. That's a huge win. Congrats, Sherry. Hashtag congrats, Sherry. I got a win this week and it stunned me in the middle of my call with this gal in the morning. I was like, oh, I didn't even think about drinking alcohol last night. And Friday nights were always a trigger for me. So yay me. I'm really excited about that. Okay, so uh, no matter what you strive for, are you willing to keep going towards greatness no matter what? Are you willing every single day to keep reevaluating your progress in what you want to achieve when it comes to your career, when it comes to your marriage, when it comes to your side hustle, when it comes to the relationship with your kids, whatever that is for you? Are you willing to keep striving towards greatness? That even if this program or this relationship or this job or this something in your life, do not settle for medi mediocrity. Do not settle because you think that you can't achieve what you ultimately want because you can. You can achieve what you ultimately want. You just have to believe it. You have to be willing to put up the risks. You have to take chances. You have to do the hard work. You have to study the skills and put yourself out there. And if you constantly try everything, thank you, Shakira, then you will eventually see and get what you want, all right? Now, what is the consequence if you don't try to get what you want? That's a big one, right? Let's go back to weight. Let's say you're 20 pounds overweight and you've tried Weight Watchers and you've tried Isogenics and you've tried this program and you've tried whatever the case may be. And at some point you just throw up your hands and you're like, this is my life. This is me. This is where it's going to be. But what is the consequence of that every single day for the rest of your life? Right. As you allow yourself to go down, 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 down or even stay the same. What are the conversations you're going to be having in your head every single day until the end of time, right? 
you know that you're always going to question it. You're always going to think about it. You're always going to obsess over it. You're always going to be disappointed with me, uh, with it, right? Hashtag agree with me if you're with me on that. Hashtag agree if you're with me that if you get to a point where you're just going to say, that's my life, right? I guess I'm just going to always be 20 pounds overweight. I guess I'm always going to be addicted to Doritos. I guess I have to just stay in this marriage because that's the way it is. I guess I have to just accept this job even though I hate it. But every day, you got to still show up for work. Every day, you got to look that person in the eye. Every day, you got to look down at your butt pants, buckles, and see them up on top. What kind of daily torture are you signing up for? Daily torture. Hashtag daily torture. What are you signing up for if you put your hands up and say, yeah, that's just the way it's going to be? Well, as you guys know by now, that is never me, right? Never me. I never accept anything the way it is. I am pushing for greatness in all aspects of my life, my relationship with my son, with somebody in my life, with my job, with you guys, with everything. Always, always pushing to be better and better and better in fitness and health and my mental state, my energy and my education, blah, blah, blah. Right? Okay. All right. Um, and then finally, what are you missing out on what are the costs of not trying right so if we're talking about weight and you just always really wanting to buy anything at the store and it always fits beautifully right what are the outfits that you're not allowed to wear or you can't wear because you don't think you look good in them right what are the memories you're not creating because you you won't do it you don't have the confidence to do it or you don't have the money to do it or what kind of love are you missing because you're accepting the mediocre relationship that you're in now, right? What kind of job and passion are you missing out on every single day because you're willing to accept this job, right? You're willing to accept the way things are at this company because you don't believe that you can get something better, because you lack the skills to get something that you truly believe in, et cetera, et cetera. How many days are you going to wake up miserable and accept that? And then what are you missing out on, on the days where you can feel amazing and thriving and passionate? That's a big one. So I'm going to conclude with this is number one, listen to your inner voice. Okay. She's talking to you all the time, all the time. And you are ignoring her 90% of the time because of fear, because of change, because of your situation, because in your mindset, in your personal belief, you are suppressing that voice down for so many reasons, primarily fear and some form of fear-based reason. So at least listen to her, even if you don't do anything about it. Listen, the universe is always going to give you signs if you listen to the signs. Sometimes you have to trust in the universe. For example, um, I originally got my massage therapy license to be able to write receipts to give people massage receipts, honest and for true. That is the reason why I set out to become a massage therapist. And as I started to become a massage therapist and I started to earn some extra money in the house to pay some bills, I also learned I loved massaging. Right? That was a fun job. I actually was shocked that I loved being a massage therapist. But the universe speaks to us in mysterious ways because it is through that time that Apple came out with earbuds where you didn't need these wires attached anymore. So after maybe a year and a half of being a massage therapist, I would put one earbud in my ear and I would listen for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of education, right? And the universe handed me over this gift and said, Shuri, here's your opportunity to learn. Here's the time that you can use to learn all that is next for you in this path. And I would have all these massages. And, you know, when people are not talking, you know, as you guys would, may know this, except for other massage therapists, but massaging doesn't come from your head, it comes from your hands. And you can feel what a person needs in the palm of your hands and not 
what's going on in your head. So I would be listening to books after books after books after books of everything to do with gut health and inflammation and all this new information that started to come out. And then one night at 1030 at night, how many times am I up at 1030? Never, right? Never. I'm never up at 1030. What happened in this one fateful night? I am actually up at 1030 and I was looking at my phone, something I never do. And here comes an email for Funnel Hacking Live. The year before I had blown it off, this year there was a calling. At 10.30 at night, I grabbed my credit card in bed, ran to my phone, and I signed up for this conference, wherever it was, I forget, I think it was in San Diego, or it doesn't matter, but I, oh no, it was in Orlando, Florida. And I signed up for my first Funnel Hacking Live, and that's when everything changed. I went to this workshop, this conference, and Tony Robbins was there. And Tony Robbins said something, forget what it was, but I remember exactly what I was thinking. And that was the moment when I truly understood. I received the message in my ears all these years ago, 2016 or 17, something like that. The message in my ears that I could do something on my own without needing anybody else. Tony spoke those words to me. I had my epiphany sitting in that seat because I went to the conference, because I signed up. It was like a lot of money. And the conference was just a few days away. I didn't know who was going to look after Liam. I didn't know the flights. I didn't know anything. I spent $2,000 boom, like that on the night with my credit card and just said, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to make this work. Bought the tickets, dealt with Liam in the morning to get him organized, bought the plane tickets, boom, I was there, boom, I was sitting in the chair, boom, I heard the message, came home, put on these fake nails the minute I got home and I said, I'm never doing another massage again. And these nails are going to keep me accountable to never doing another massage again because I must build my online business, right? crazy right hashtag story time <laughs> if you're enjoying my stories i know i'm going to be almost an hour here i hope it's worth it hashtag story time if you're enjoying listening to these stories all to say that even again this weekend something happened on thursday at some point i think it was thursday morning something like that i got this message and it just it just blew me out of the water right out of my normal state. And for the last four days, I have, I was, I've just been conjugating up this, these thoughts and these, and it, it, I had to stop. Everything had to stop. Every, like my work stopped. Everything stopped. I just had to process and think about what I was thinking, what I was feeling, what this message meant to me. And just closing my eyes, either working out or just sitting on the couch or whatever, uh, thinking and stopping and absorbing this message. And to me, it's a very significant message that needs addressing too. It's private to me right now, so I'm not gonna share it, but sometimes you have to stop everything that you're doing and just listen. Stop clear out all the noise, clear out all the clutter, just stop and listen to what the voices are telling you, to what the universe is, is pointing at you. Because very often in that moment, don't wait for this, this brick to fall on your head. Like the universe won't often throw that big brick on your head to knock you right out. Okay, it will give you gentle nudges along the way. And if you stop and listen to those gentle little nudges, you follow that, you follow that and you're going to see your life is going to evolve and transform as you do those steps. And I think, I think, 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 I've been on here way too long, but if you've enjoyed um, today's podcast, hashtag use of the podcast. If you think I was able to serve you today, that would make me super happy for you to tell me that I helped you. I helped Kim. I helped Vanessa, Cynthia, Linda, Rosanna, the other Kim, a matcha. Renee was here. Shelly was here. Shanna was here. Look at all you amazing people. Yes. 
and Kathy. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hashtag useful podcast. If I was able to serve you today, that makes me really happy when I can do that. And uh, you got to learn a little bit more about me. So in the meantime, guys, I'm going to wish you all an amazing day. And uh, we'll talk to you really soon.